Hi, Leo Laporte here. It's Before You Buy Time. Coming up, three things that can get wet, one thing that shouldn't, and a big TV. It's all coming up next on Before You Buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage using your own computer and printer whenever you need it. You'll never have to go to the post office again. For my special $110 bonus offer, go to Stamps.com today and use the promo code Before You Buy. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcasts.com slash before you buy. Hi, Leo Laporte here. This is Before You Buy, our product review show on the Twit Network, in which all of our twits get to take a look at the products that come in and uh, we get reviews on a bunch of different stuff. Coming up, we've got some great ones for you. We'll start off with this. It's actually kind of exciting. It's a an Android phone for only $80. It includes dual-core processors and LTE speed. Jason Howell has his review. Hey, what's up? I'm Jason Howell, and I am here with the LG Lucid. It runs on Verizon's 4G network. Now, you might think that everybody would like to have the extra money to afford a top-of-the-line Android phone. It's not always the case, and that is exactly where the LG Lucid shines. Let's take a look. It's a dual-core 1.2 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. It has one gig of RAM. It's a four-inch IPS display with Gorilla Glass. It has a five-megapixel rear-facing camera on the back, as well as an LED flash for the camera, and it is capable of recording 1080p HD video. And on the front, you have a 0.3 megapixel front-facing camera. Under the flap, we have a 1700 milliamp hour removable battery, as well as a micro SD card slot. As well, you have DLNA for wireless sharing of your media. And finally, it comes with gingerbread, Ice cream sandwich is confirmed to arrive sometime in the future. Now let's take a look at the design. It actually feels pretty solid in the hand considering it's almost entirely plastic. It doesn't really feel hollow when you tap it and tap on the back. It's very uh, sturdy. It has a deep purple and black gradient that you can see on the back. You really see it out in the sunlight. It actually gives the phone some unique character. And throughout you see these rounded edges on the phone that really makes it comfortable in the hand as well as in the pocket. Overall, I actually enjoyed how compact and solid this phone felt over time. Now let's take a look at the screen. It's a four inch screen. It has 480 by 800 resolution. I would say that that's pretty acceptable for a phone of this class. The screen gets very bright. Overall, I'd say I was pretty satisfied with the screen. It's not obviously as high definition as something like a Galaxy Nexus, but it's perfectly acceptable. Now let's take a look at the camera. The rear-facing camera actually uh, takes great pictures if you have sufficient light. And you kind of have to give yourself some extra time to focus because it can operate slowly at times. There is no image stabilization with the camera here. And that goes for the video as well, which records at 1080p. Video looks pretty good, though there were some images with very fine details that tended to break up a little bit during my playing around with the device. Now, as for the front-facing camera, uh, the quality is pretty poor. You certainly can't expect a whole lot with 0.3 megapixels. It's VGA quality. But considering the price for the phone, I really didn't expect much. Now onto performance. Overall, I really felt that things moved pretty snappy with this device. I mean, it has a dual core 1.2 gigahertz processor, and these specs were considered top of the line not even eight months ago. So you're really getting good bang for your buck. Web browsing was pretty nice and pretty fast through my use of it. Uh, the one thing that I actually noticed a little bit of slowdown were things like gaming. All right, now the calls that I made on the phone uh, were actually pretty loud and mostly clear. I didn't really have any issues understanding the people on the other side. And the speakerphone was reasonably loud, though not always as clear as I'd like. But overall, I think this phone makes pretty good calls. 
I'd say the battery life on the LG Lucid is pretty respectable. On 3G only, I got through every day without total depletion, and that's with Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram syncing on a regular basis. I spent about a half a day in San Francisco with 4G, and at the end of that, my battery was still about half full by the time I left. Okay, so let's take a look at the software. One thing about this phone is there is so much bloatware. There's just so much stuff crammed into here. And the app drawer really tries to make things easier with predetermined categories, but it actually ends up making everything just a little bit more difficult to find. It also has gesture controls built in, but with my experience, they were very iffy. They'd work sometimes, they wouldn't work perfectly the next. And finally, there are power management settings that allow you to make your phone just a little bit smarter when it comes to your battery. That's the LG Lucid. Now let's take a look at the pros of the device. It's comfortable and has a very durable design. It has zippy performance for most tasks, and it's a low-cost access to Verizon's LTE network. Now the cons. It launches with gingerbread. Camera performance is definitely hit or miss. And finally, LG's skin promises much more than it delivers. Overall, if you're looking for an Android device in the mid-range price point, you'd be hard-pressed to find much better than the LG Lucid. I absolutely recommend it as a buy. You can catch reviews by me on another show I do on the Twit Network, All About Android, at twit.tv slash AAA. Otherwise, thank you for checking out my review of the LG Lucid. What do you call this? Silent lucidity. Sorry. Thank you, Jason. The uh, Lucid is available now, which is... Uh... It's a good thing. Uh, coming up in just a bit, we've got a tablet from AT&T that they say you can dunk. And we will dunk it in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about not going to the post office anymore. Stamps.com! I love these guys. It, I've been using them for years. In fact, I first discovered Stamps.com because, uh, well, frankly, the, the post office raised the price of stamps. And I didn't want to go. I didn't want to get in line. I just wanted to print stamps. And I thought... You can't do that, can you? But I, I found stamps.com. You can. You can print official U.S. postage with your computer and your printer. You don't need a postage meter. You'll save hundreds of, hundreds of dollars a year uh, uh, over a postage meter. And you always have the right postage because stamps.com sends you at a, a USB scale. You can pop a letter or a package, anything on it. It'll weigh it, tell you exactly how much postage you owe, always calculating the right amount based on the current postage uh, tables from the U.S. government, and then print out the postage. If you're mailing internationally, it'll even fill out the forms for you. So it's really great. And you don't ever have to bring that post off, a package to the post office. You just, the mail carrier comes and gets it, or you call them, and they schedule a free pickup with stamps.com. Now, I've got a really great trial offer for you. In fact, if you haven't done this yet, you got to do it. This is great. I don't know how much longer they're going to keep this going. $55 free postage, plus the USB scale, plus a month of stamps.com, a no-risk trial offer. All you pay is shipping and handling for the scale, and you are going to love this. $55 free postage, but you got to go through a little bit of a little tricky thing to, to get it. If you go to stamps.com, you'll see it's an $80 offer. I'm going to bump that postage. If you click the microphone the, up in the upper right-hand corner and use our offer code before you buy, that Postage goes to $55 from $25. And you get the USB scale, the supply kit, and four weeks of stamps.com. I'll tell you what, you will never, ever, ever get a better deal than this. And I'm telling you, there is no better product than stamps.com. If you have to do mailing of any kind, are you an eBay seller? Do you mail out invoices? This is a fantastic deal. Stamps.com. Click the radio microphone. Use the offer code before you buy. Well, I became kind of famous for dunking my iPhone in a glass of water. That didn't go so well. <laughs> so I assigned, I wasn't going to do this review. I assigned this to Eileen Rivera. This is a Pantech Element tablet. We saw it at CES. The Pantech claims is waterproof. Well, there's only one way to find out. Eileen? Hey, everyone. This is Eileen Rivera with Twit.tv and Before You Buy. And today, of course, I have another Android device. This time it's the Pantech Element 8-inch Android tablet. Here we go. And uh, 8 inches is kind of interesting because the apps itself don't necessarily scale well. But besides that, the biggest thing about this device, it's waterproof. Now, I'm going to dunk it in some water. But before we get to that, let me run you through some of the specs. 
Like I mentioned, it's an eight inch screen, 1024 by 768 pixel display with a four three aspect ratio. It's got dual core, 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm processor with one gig of RAM and 16 gigs of internal storage. Now you can also expand because there is a micro SD card slot. App switching is pretty fast. Uh, everything loads pretty well. And another big thing is that it is on the AT&T uh, LTE network here. So uh, pretty fast speeds. It's micro SD, HDMI port. On the back here also, you'll see that there is a camera. It's five megapixels on the back with an LCD light here. It also has 720p uh, video recording. Now the device itself is running Honeycomb. It's uh, not running the latest operating system, which is ICS. But again, um, the, the tablet itself is really snappy. As you can see, I'm turning pages pretty well here. Let me launch the browser. And uh, I'm on the network uh, itself. So uh, yeah, everything seems to be loading pretty quickly here kind of plasticky feel here and that may jar you the first time that you uh, touch the device but I think you'll get used to it. Uh, what's also great is that the speaker is right here out in front so playing music sounds fantastic. One thing you'll see here is there are a lot of icons on the screen now. I have downloaded about five or ten apps, but a lot of this stuff here, especially on this screen, uh, has already been preloaded on the device. That's because AT&T just has a ton of bloatware, so you'll have to expect that uh, when you first get the device. Also, there's a weird sort of uh, full haptic experience uh, with the tablet, so when you're switching pages, um, you'll feel a weird haptic sensation that's not only on the keyboard itself, but it's on the full tablet. You can turn that off, but it, it might turn you, you might turn you off when you try it for the first time. Now let's get to the thing that you guys really want to know about the waterproofness of this device. It's important to note that it's not ruggedized. So don't just hurl it around and throw it around. Although it kind of feels like you can and it'll not destruct. Be careful with it. Uh, I would say that this tablet is really for the accident prone. So um, maybe you have kids and they're spilling water or things you know, all around, your device will be okay. How many times have you had a tablet like maybe an iPad and thought, oh, I can't get that near water. But uh, in actuality, you could take it in the tub. And you can also use it as a device to help you in relationships. So now let's see how it does if I just leave it in water. Here we go. <laughs> so here it is in the water. And as you can see, it's still on. But can I actually do anything with it? Not really. So I can pull it out and it still works. And you really can't use it when it's wet. You have to be careful there. So you just gotta kinda dry it, dry it off first. But in the end, you can leave this in water for about 30 minutes and it should still be alive. All right. All right, now while I dry the device here, let me tell you about the pros and cons. First of all, it's pretty affordable for an Android device. $299 with a two-year contract or $449 for this device is actually pretty good. It's not some outrageous uh, uh, price like the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7 or some other Android devices out there. Uh, also, it's pretty snappy and solid. Uh, very happy with the responsiveness and the speed of this tablet and the waterproof design. It works. It really does work. Uh, some of the cons here, some of the apps are incompatible and um, don't scale very well on this odd eight inch size. And uh, there's no hotspot functionality. You'd think that you might get that with a LTE device, but you don't. So all in all, what do I think of this device? 
I have a lot of really good things to say about this, I think, overall. And I have to admit, uh, the first time I was handed this device and I kind of played around with it, I thought, this is not, I'm not going to like this device at all. But it grew on me. I used it for a week and a half, and I kind of don't want to give it back. So all in all, I will say, try. I'm Eileen Rivera with Twit.tv and Before You Buy, and this is the Pantech Element Android Tablet. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look at that. <laughs> Don't do this with your iPhone, but you can do it with the Pantech Element. There it is. That's Chad's bathtub reading right there. <laughs> right there. Now, great for the beach. What about uh, a camera that you could, oh, I'm a Butterfingers, you could drop in the water? That's fine. Don't worry. Tony Wang has a review of the uh, Coolpix AW100. Tony? I'm Tony for Twit, and today I'm reviewing the Nikon AW100 uh, waterproof, shockproof, freeze-proof point-and-shoot camera. The selling point on this camera is that it's waterproof uh, up to 33 feet, and uh, the shockproof is only 5 feet drop, so pretty much from here to the ground. And uh, so that's a little, it's not a lot of distance. I mean, if you're rock climbing and you drop this, it's dead. Um, it's got a very nice, uh, rugged looking design. I mean, how rugged it actually is, we don't know until we drop it. Uh, the, uh, the camera also comes with GPS and that actually works really well uh, because I'm shooting this outdoor. Um, it does have 5X optical zoom and also 4X digital zoom, which don't use the digital zoom, you know, you should know that. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, if you take a look at the battery, door battery and the uh, car door you can see the weather ceiling it's rubberized here and um, you just close it and sort of close the hatch the uh, the camera is actually average in terms of quality um, uh, it's actually you know it, it works pretty well you know better than your camera phone um, but not better than uh, other point issue in this price point like the ZS 15 I reviewed or the or the uh, the uh, I mean the S100 is sort of top of the line and uh, the MSRP is $349.99 so it's a little pricey uh, you can find street price for $50 or less than that and um, it does your uh, average you know 1080p video recording and at 30 frames per second and uh, the, um, I mean, you can see there's no protruding lens because the way that Nikon does their um, optical zooming, it's actually done through a mirror on, inside the camera and you're zooming uh, this way, uh, vertically. Uh, pros and cons, very good weather ceiling. Uh, shockproof is, you know, as far as I can tell, I dropped it a couple of times, hasn't broke it. Um, GPS works well and the, uh, you don't have any protruding lenses coming out from the front of the camera, so that's another pro. Con of the camera, and this is an analogy that I thought of, is this is sort of like the uh, Hummer H2. So it's not the top of the line at what it does. Um, it looks flashy, just like a Hummer H2. Uh, and it looks rugged, it's got all these square design to it. And, um, but in the end, it's supposed to be a car and it's supposed to drive well, and it doesn't. And this is supposed to be a camera, and it's supposed to take pictures well, but it doesn't really. Uh, they, I mean, they, I understand that the focus of the camera is on the weatherproofing and, you know, the shockproofing and supposed, you know, freeze-proofing, but if you can't take good pictures with this, it's kind of pointless. The battery life is okay. They're, they're saying 250 shots in one charge, and that's not a lot compared to um, other cameras that say uh, Panasonic's and you know they're saying 400 shots or Sony's you know 400 or more shots so 250 shots that's not a lot of pictures Jeff you know you burn through 250 shots in like you know two hours right. yep so buy try or don't buy it's a try if you're looking for something that's waterproof this would be one of the cameras you're looking at. There's also a few other, uh, the water's coming in. There's a few other cameras in the market that actually does the same thing, but this, this is probably the nice, nicest looking uh, camera. So 
go try it in the store, uh, but do be mindful of the cons of the camera. I'm Tony for Twit, and this is the Nikon AW100. Water test. I lost it for a second. Still works. I'm Brian from Twit. Here to show you the Kyocera Dura Plus. That's a ruggedized phone. Why don't you toss it here, Alex? Uh, one more. Perfect. Uh, this is a rugged phone uh, made for military specs. It's resistant against dust, uh, shock, or water. A nice feature on this phone, if you are an emergency responder, is a pretty powerful LED light at the top. This phone uses Sprint's Direct Connect feature, um, so it works pretty much like a walkie-talkie, and that can be a lot of fun. Aesthetically, it looks like a rubber taser, um, but it upholds, it's, it is very sturdy. So compared to uh, most modern smartphones, this phone's pretty heavy. It's 6.7 ounces, and the screen is a 2-inch 320 by 240 pixel LCD. Um, it looks sharp for its size. Um, you can definitely read text, okay? But the interface um, is definitely old school. Also, this phone features a headset jack here at the top right um, for a 2.5 millimeter head jack, not the standard 3.5 headphone jack. So your headphones won't work with this. You'll have to have a, a headset. It has Bluetooth, GPS, all those features you'd expect with a phone these days. This Dura Plus model doesn't have an SD card slot and uh, no camera either. Um, this is pretty much your bare bones, um, tough phone, good for making calls, and the call quality is clear. And the, uh, phone calls sound good, and even after having been submerged recently. This phone is $69.99 with a two-year contract on Sprint. So the pros of this phone are it's a, it's a tough, rugged phone. Uh, it can withstand a drop or, or a, you know falling into some water. It's got good call quality. Uh, along with a powerful speaker and long battery life. Some of the cons of this phone are its size and weight. It's heavy. Uh, it's got an outdated kind of UI feel to it. Buy, try, or don't buy. Uh, if you're prone to breaking phones, dropping them a lot, or getting them submerged in water, this might be a good choice for you. Uh, I would find it very difficult to break this phone unless you're purposefully trying to. So this has been the Kyocera Duramax from Sprint, and I'm Brian Burnett. I'll see you next time on Before You Buy. Wow, Tony Wang with the... Uh, the <laughs> We're doing only uh, wet products today with the Nikon AW100 and this uh, Kyocera Dura Plus, which really is uh, durable. Thanks to uh, Brian Burnett, one of our editors, Tony Wang, another one of our editors for their reviews. Now, coming up in just a little bit, I'm going to take a look at a really big, really nice television set. You can see it here right behind me. Before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about audible.com. Yes, you can listen to audible.com underwater on that Pantech element. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Audible is my bookstore of choice these days. It's an audio bookstore online. 100,000 books. If you go to audible.com, you can find out about all of those books. And I've got a special deal for you, a free book, when you visit audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. Uh, I mean, talk about summer reading. Mysteries, thrillers, uh, biographies, fiction, nonfiction, bestsellers, science fiction. It's all there. Uh, audible.com is one of the best places to go. My next book, the one I'm saving for uh, beach time, no, I can't wait. Stephen King's The Stand. Oh, what a great novel. In fact, most Stephen King novels are on there, including all the great uh, scary books like Carrie and uh, 
The Stand, and and, and, and of course, his Gunslinger uh, series as well. And the new one's coming out in just a couple of days, so you can get it there too. Audible.com. Browse around. Find a book. You're going to get a credit free when you go to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. You'll be signing up for the gold account. That's a credit a month. Uh, I, I, I love that because I easily go through a book a month. So audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. You can cancel at any time. If you cancel in the first month, you don't have to pay a thing, and the book is yours to keep forever. So it's a very, very good deal. Would you try Audible for me, please? Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. You will thank me. I promise you. All right, let's take a look at this big screen TV I've got sitting behind me. I always pick my favorite products to review. You know I love TVs, and here is a really nice one from Sharp. This is a Sharp Aquos 60LE 640U, kind of an entry-level uh, TV from Sharp. Big, though, 60 inches, LCD, LED, edge lit. Uh, good black levels, uh, good motion control. They do have a 120 hertz option. I declined to use that because it kind of looks plasticky to me, but certainly action movies like this or sports will look a little bit better. We're watching Aliens right now. I th it's, it's a tough battle going on. Um, one of the, A couple of things I like about this. First of all, the price is right. Uh, by unbundling 3D, this is not a 3D TV, Sharp has got the price down to $1,500, which is an amazing price for a 60-inch TV. They've also got Wi-Fi and Ethernet on it, so we have full Internet connectivity. Netflix is right there on the, uh, on the remote control. By the way, well-designed remote control. Uh, I found it easy to use uh, and uh, very clear. Uh, they have dedicated buttons for your favorite apps. I'll show you those in a second. Here's uh, Netflix. You probably spent a lot of time uh, in here. And the Netflix works quite well. Um, it, it is it, you don't have to have a separate box for it. You don't have to have an outboard, uh, you know, Apple TV or Roku. I just got Netflix right on there. We'll go back to Friday Night Lights here uh, as uh, I'm talking about it. Uh, there are also some other apps on here. Voodoo is on here. Um, here, I'll show you. In fact, I'll, uh, I'll pull up the Smart Central. That's what uh, Sharp calls this. And you can see at the bottom of the screen, I have uh, a little uh, list of apps. And you see they're designated app one, two, and three. The first three apps have a button on the remote control, so I can go directly to them. In this case, we've set it up for Voodoo HD Movies, uh, YouTube, and Cinema Now. That's a movie rental service, somewhat like Netflix. Netflix is the fourth app. Uh, Voodoo Apps uh, is also on here, and if I click it, you'll see uh, a variety of things. This is We're set up on the Ethernet, um, and I think uh, the Ethernet, of course, is a little bit faster, but the Wi-Fi worked uh, quite well, too, and if you don't have an Ethernet jack or your cable modem or DSL modem near the TV, this will be uh, a lot better. Um, I don't know what's going on. It's not good. It's a little scary in Aliens right now. Let's go back to our uh, our apps. Here we go. Here's the Voodoo apps. You see that you can get other apps on here, including Facebook, Weather, NBC Nightly News, Today Show. Uh, Voodoo gives you a pretty broad range of apps, very much like uh, the Roku box or other ones. So, uh, in fact, many TV shows have their own apps. You can watch TED Talks on here. Uh, and a lot more. So uh, I think this is, a, a, you know, a kind of a nice way to handle the uh, app problem. Uh, I would say it's fairly complete. You're not going to probably need a set-top box. There's even, and this is this is pretty cool, a browser built in, and what they call Aquos Advantage Live. It'll take the picture on the screen, squeeze it over to the right, open a browser, or to the left, open a browser on the right that I can go to to get more information, support a user guide, uh, update the software, uh, and more. That's a full browser built into the TV. So the pros on this TV, well, you got to start with price. The price is absolutely right at $1,500. Uh, I think it's got a very good uh, picture. Black levels are excellent. Um, the 120 hertz support will be good for those of you who are action movie junkies. And I think they've done the apps well. There are not a lot of them. They're simple. They're easy to use. And there's a great big red Netflix button right on the remote control. That's probably the app you're going to end up using the most anyway. Uh, Cons on this, no 3D, uh, so if that's important to you, this is not the television set uh, for you. Um, I'm, I think the upscaler in this is a little bit weak, so if you watch a lot of standard definition video, I think you might be a little unhappy if you sit close to the TV as I am right now. But HD looks, uh, looks fantastic. Uh, and, of course, the price is absolutely right. I give this an absolute buy recommendation. That's the Sharp Aquos LC 60 LE 640 you 60 inch television set one more tip i wouldn't recommend submerging it in water uh, you could do that with a pantech 
You can do that with the Cool Picks. You can even do it with the Kia Sera, but don't put the TV in the water. That's it for this edition of Before You Buy, our deep water edition. Uh, if you want to see more about any of any of our reviews, we've got full uh, versions of even the short ones on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash twit. We do the show Thursday evenings about 5 o'clock in the uh, Brick House. You can stop by then if you'd like to watch, but of course... Um, you can also get it at twit.tv after the fact and anywhere better podcasts are. In fact, I would suggest you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks to all of our contributors. Thanks to you for watching. And remember, you got to watch before you buy. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>